What's up everybody, this is Yudit1999 here. Today I want to show you my workflow on how to sculpt hair in Blender. Um, but before I get into the tutorial, I want to say thank you to Huyon for sending me this pen display. It's Huyon Canvas 16. I have tested it and it's pretty good, uh, especially for the price that it has. It's pretty affordable. If you are looking for a pen display to buy, I can definitely recommend this. I made a small review for it and I'll put that at the end of the video if you guys are interested. Okay, so people have asked me how I sculpt hair for my characters. Uh, it's actually pretty simple workflow and I'll break it down for you. So I'll start with Bezier curve uh, and I'm gonna straighten this. And next, I'll add a circle curve object and I'm gonna make it somewhat square with smooth corners. Now I'm gonna scale it down and I'm gonna use it as the bevel object for the Bezier curve. Here I'm just trying to put it on her head. Now I'm just gonna hide her hair for demonstration. And there you go. Bald Hinata over here. <laughs> here I'm trying to make an interesting shape for the hair. Um, you can subdivide the points by right clicking on the active points. You can scale the radius of the hair by using Alt S. Uh, you can also adjust the rotation of the radius by adjusting the mean tilt value. And then after that, I'm gonna convert it into mesh. And next, I'm gonna add two levels of subdivision surface and then apply it. Now it's time to go into sculpt mode. First, I'm just gonna smooth it out because usually it has this weird sharp transition between each point. And next, I'm gonna use the, short, the, the draw sharp brush to block out the details. Sculpting hair like this is pretty relaxing to me. I don't know about you guys, but um, yeah, it's, I, I, I can just Put on some music, or podcast, and just sculpting hair. Here I'm just smoothing it out, I'm making the surface less bumpy. Uh, next, I'm gonna use crisp brush with 0.7 for the pinch value and 0.4 for the strength. Now with the crisp brush, make sure that you change the fall off to sharp because I believe the default was set to smooth. And here I'm gonna sculpt the creases for the hair. And a hair with style like this is, um, uh, in the industry, sometimes we call it ice cream hair. And it's used, uh, for example, in the cinematic production work for this hair will be used as block out that will be replaced later uh, with actual particle hair. Some stylized movies or games also use uh, the similar style of hair. For example, Fortnite, uh, Star Wars, The Clone Wars. 
Beware the Batman, uh, etc. This type of hair is also used in collectibles a lot. Uh, I'm currently working for a collectibles production studio and we use ice cream hair a lot. Uh, the variation of ice cream hair is pretty common. Some will have really small uh, creases and some will have pretty big creases. Uh, and I think this style of hair is just nice to look at uh, and it's pretty fun to sculpt too so now the example here that I show you by sculpting the creases by hand is not recommended if you have a tight deadline there are other methods to make the creases for example you can create the creases in the bevel object itself but the problem with that is uh, it will have a continu con continuous crease from the root to the tip and that doesn't look very interesting to me and other way is that uh, my lead artist uh, Wanda Kurniawan gave me this hairbrush for ZBrush it has UVs in it so basically how to add the creases is by adding some sort of displacement map to it it's pretty cool um, if you guys interested he actually made a video on it uh, and I'll put the link in the description below. Here I'm just gonna add some vertex color just to make it a bit more interesting. And next, what I like to do is add a plane and then merge them into one vertex and then extrude it a few times. And then I'm gonna convert it into a curved object. And what I'm trying to do is create those flyaway hairs. Can use the surface snap feature to help a little bit with the process and again it's a curved object so it has the same control all as to resize the radius uh, mean tilt for the rotation of the radius uh, etc And so that's kind of about it um, with my Hinata sculpt here uh, her hair has this what's the word um, god damn it why am I blanking um, not pointy hair I guess uh, and I was basically just you know at the beginning of the demonstration where I 
just decrease the radius on the tip of the hair yeah I just didn't do that for this and I also used the boolean uh, to cut the tip of the hair uh, if you guys want to see this workflow in action I have a few time-lapse video that you can watch so you guys can have a better understanding on how to pull it off uh, all together so yeah if you guys have any questions uh, don't be hesitant to ask me and I'll do my best to answer them and yeah I'll see you guys in the next one and take it easy everyone keep up Here's my thoughts on Huion Kampa 16. When it got here, it came with the pen display itself, battery free pen, 3-in-1 uh, cable, power adapter, pen holder, pen nibs, pen nib clip, uh, glove, cleaning cloth, and the quick start guide. The panel size is 15.6 inch with the native resolution of 1920 by 1080. It has 8192 levels for the pressure levels uh, the pros are the tip of the pen feels satisfying when I'm just making strokes or just clicking stuff I cannot put it into words but um maybe the best way to describe it is it feels natural and the color looks pretty good I actually use it to watch the Sonic movie uh, I know it's not what it's supposed to be used, but anyway. And the installation is really easy too. And for what it is, it's pretty affordable. And overall, I think it's pretty good and I can recommend it. But I have some notes. First, uh, the display, uh, like the right bottom corner of it, it got pretty warm after a while. I don't know if every pen display are doing that because I don't use a uh, pen display a lot I actually prefer just using a uh, regular pen tablet but for digital painting uh, I love using pen display but that could just be happen only on the one that I got a second the the bottom button on the pen has this bump to it like a small circle bump that made me uncomfortable honestly I'm having a hard time working it but that could be because I'm used with the Wacom pen that I got. Third, when I installed the driver for it, it actually messed up my Wacom configuration and I had to reinstall my Wacom driver to fix it. That's kind of a bummer, but um... So yeah, that's about it. Uh, for more information on the product, I'll put the links on the description below. Um, and again, uh, see you guys in the next one.